Hey, what's up, YouTube? In this video, we're going to prove that the sequence of functions uh, converges uniformly. So first, uh, let's recall uh, what it means for a sequence of functions to converge uniformly. So we say that a sequence f sub n from a set d into the set of real numbers converges uniformly on D if so for every epsilon greater than zero we can find some positive integer n so a natural number I'll just say positive integer and so n here can only depend on epsilon right so n only depends on epsilon such that For every little n bigger than capital N, and for every x in D, we can make the distance between f sub n and its limit function less than epsilon. So I probably should say it converges uniformly to f on D. There we go. So the sequence of functions will converge uniformly to some other function, which we'll call f on d, if this is true. Okay, um, let's go ahead and prove this. So before we prove it, we kind of have to figure out the proof. Um, so let's go ahead and do that. So scratch work, scratch work. All right, so to figure out the proof, we need to find an n such that this is true, right? Such that the distance between our sequence and f of x is less than epsilon. Well, intuition tells us that whenever x is bigger than two, because x is in here, um, this should approach zero, right? Because you have one over something that's getting larger and larger and larger. So we'll start by writing down this inequality. And we want this to be uh, less than epsilon. That's our goal. Our goal is to make this uh, less than epsilon. So anything minus 0 is itself. So we have 1 over 1 plus x to the n. We don't really need the absolute values because x is a positive number. So this is 1 over 1 plus x to the n. And we can say this is less than or equal to 1 over x to the n because we can drop the 1, right? This fraction here on the left is smaller than this fraction here on the right because 1 plus x to the n is bigger than x to the n, so the bottom is bigger. So you can create a less than or equal to. And we want this to be um, less than epsilon. We want this to be less than epsilon. All right, so we have to solve for n. So I'm going to come up here. I'm going to write it like this just to make it a little bit easier. Okay, so we have this. Um, now we know something about x, but right? we have to somehow get rid of the x. So x is in here. So x is bigger than 2. That means if you divide by 2 and divide by x, you have 1 over 2 is greater than or equal to 1 over x. So 1 over x is, yeah, less than or equal to 1 half. So this will allow us to get rid of the x, right? Because our n can only depend on epsilon. So when you get here, um, I had to think. I haven't done this problem yet. And you want to get rid of the x because um, you don't want n to depend on x. It can only depend on a number and epsilon. So 1 over x, x to the n, is less than or equal to um, 1 over 2 to the n. Okay. If that's not clear, you can think of it like this. 1 over x to the n. And that's less than or equal to 1 half to the n. So we could do that. And we want that to be less than epsilon. So to solve this for n, now we'll take the natural log of both sides. So ln 1 half to the n is less than ln epsilon. And then you can use the power rule so you bring down the n. And that's less than um, ln epsilon. Now when you divide by the natural log of 1 half, the natural log of 1 half is a negative number. Um, so the inequality sign will switch. So you end up with this. So we just have to choose an n that's bigger than this. And we can do that um, by using the Archimedean principle, right? So the Archimedean principle says that given any real number, 
we can find a positive integer that's greater. So we'll choose our n to be bigger than this. Let's go ahead and do our proof over here. So proof. So to start the proof, uh, we'll start by um, letting epsilon be greater than 0, and then choosing our n, okay, and then choosing our n. So let epsilon be greater than 0. And then by the Archimedean property, we can choose a positive integer n. So choose n that is greater than the natural log of epsilon over the natural log of 1 half. And, you know, we can specify also that n, I didn't write it, that n is a positive integer. And we can do this by the Archimedean principle. Then, let's go back to the definition so you see what to write next. So it says for all little n bigger than n and for all x and d. So x here is in this. This is our d. Right? This is our d. So for all little n bigger than capital N and for all x here in this set, this is our d, we're going to look at the difference between 1 over 1 plus x to the n and 0. That's equal to 1 over 1 plus x to the n. I'll drop the absolute value. It's equal to 1 over 1 plus x to the n. And we're pretty much going to repeat what we did. This is less than or equal to 1 over x to the n. And I'm going to go ahead and write this as 1 over x to the n, just repeating our steps. And then 1 over x is less than or equal to 1 half. This is 1 over 2. To the end, right? And now let's let's see if we can if we can work backwards and show that this is carefully less than epsilon. I, I think we can. So we know. Let's go to the side here. We know. So well, maybe not go to the side. Let's do it in the proof. So since little n is bigger than capital N, which is bigger than ln epsilon over ln one half. What we'll do now is we'll show that this is less than we'll show that this is less than epsilon this piece here, and so to do that we'll solve for one half to the n. So how do we do that? Um, well, I guess we can start by multiplying by ln one half. So let me write this down one more time. So little n is bigger than ln epsilon, ln one half. Then I'm going to multiply by ln one half. So ln one half is a negative number. The natural log of any number between zero and one is negative. So when we do that, we have to switch the inequality sign. So this will be n ln 1 half less than ln epsilon, right? Just working backwards. And now we can bring this upstairs using the, po using the power rule. So this is ln 1 half to the n less than ln epsilon, okay? Then we can exponentiate, right? So put an e here, put an e here. And then that gives us 1 half to the n less than epsilon. So to recap, so to recap, so hence, let's write down everything in a more organized fashion. 1 over 1 plus x to the n minus 0, right? So starting here, right, is less than or equal to, right, 1 half to the n which is less than epsilon. And that, and that completes the proof, right? We showed uh, uniform um, convergence. We started with an epsilon greater than zero. We found a natural number n, such that for all little n bigger than n and for all x in this interval, the distance between f sub n of x and our limit function, which was zero, is less than epsilon. So not the nicest proof, maybe, but um, I kind of just figured it out on the spot. So I hope this was helpful. That's it.